Ways to prevent public meltdowns in Leo kids. Last year, I was trick-or-treating with my four-year-old twins and I saw a little kid, he was about maybe two and a half to three years old, on the floor, crying, screaming, kicking. The mom was trying to get him up and then the more she tried, the more he, he stayed there. That's the kind of behavior that I'm going to be talking about today. My name is Marcela Collier. I'm the owner of High Impact Club Parenting Education Online Platform and I'm a certified parenting coach. I teach gentle parenting, parenting with understanding. If you want to learn more about that topic, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because every week I upload new content. This video is about preventing public meltdowns, but what about when your child is already in the public meltdown? How do you provide emotional support so your child cools down fast? And more importantly, candy safety, trick-or-treating safety, on-the-road safety, and COVID safety. So this Halloween trick-or-treating day goes as smooth as possible. I created a free downloadable with all these guidelines and tips and suggestions. It's free. I'm going to leave a link below and you can download it today before Halloween day. This video is about meltdowns, not tantrums, and they're not the same. They're different. Tantrums are a goal-oriented behavior, meaning the child wants something, he doesn't get it for some reason, you give him a no, and then he throws a big emotional outburst because he doesn't get that something. Meltdowns are different. They are a nervous system reaction to high stress. There are two main reasons why meltdowns occurred in public settings for Leo kids. Number one is sensory overload. So there are many things that come through the senses for kids, especially in Halloween night. Noises, textures, the environment itself is scary, right? And the crowd, it could get overwhelming for kids. All that sensory stimulation could get overwhelming for kids and they could end up having a meltdown. To prevent that is to understand what triggers your child the most. For one of my twins, what triggers him the most is crowds. Not so much noises, not so much bright lights, is crowds. For some other kids, it might be the noises. For some other kids, it might be the bright lights. For some other kids, it might be even the textures of their custom. If the custom is too tight, too hot inside, um, the, too heavy, it could create sensory overload as well. So be conscientious of that, especially customs that have masks, that have beers, that come with as accessories that make children uncomfortable. Overtiredness could lead children to meltdowns. So make sure that trick-or-treating, as soon as the sun goes down, you go out trick-or-treating and you don't stay so long that your child gets overtired and he just has a meltdown just because he's done. He's done with the night. And the other thing that could create meltdowns is when they get scared, when they are fearful of things. So if they see way too many scary masks and you know that's a trigger for your child, then maybe, maybe trick-or-treating on the neighborhood might not be the option because you cannot control who who shows up with the scary mask. There, there are Halloween events, Halloween festivals. I'm taking the twins to one of those and they are kid friendly. Over there you see all the little kids dressed up. It's usually well lit and they have Halloween age appropriate activities for kids. Read your child's cues. Read your child's cues. If you see that your child starts getting uncomfortable approaching houses for trick or treating, read that. If you push them to, to that, they might do it the first house, but the second house, they might just have a meltdown in, on the middle of the sidewalk because they're scared of they're uncomfortable about doing that. So read your child's cues and follow along with it. Leo kids, they get thirsty easily, they get tired easily. So if you see that they're getting tired, that might be the time that you need to go back home, even if you've been trick-or-treating for just 20 minutes. A big trigger for children are pranks. Yes, you might think they're funny, but for children, they're not that funny. They're actually pretty real. Even if you reassure them that that was really daddy trying to scare them, not a ghost they're still going to have that anxiety because for kids, fiction and reality is a blur, it's not that clear. 
What about public tantrums? We're talking about meltdowns in this video. They, it's a nervous system reaction to some kind of stress for sensory overload because they get scared. But what about when they throw this tantrum, this big emotional expression for things that they cannot get? But I want candy right now. I want to eat all my candy right now once they come back home, for example. For that, I created a video, how to prevent public tantrums. That video is going to answer that question for you. It's this one right here. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and tell me, what is your child's custom this year? For my twins, they're going to be ninjas. Cycle breakers, it only takes understanding to break your cycle. And remember to download your free emotional support guide for this Halloween.